was a little kid, you know, five years old, I was sailing by myself out here. And I can remember just loving it, just getting out there and sailing around. Because I suppose it represented freedom, just like any kid, you know, you get your first bike, you're, you have freedom. Well, my first sailboat, because I wasn't allowed to drive the motorboat, but I, could, I was allowed to go sailing. So I'd sail around the lake and uh, just loved it. Um, so that's, that's very fond memories. It's kind of unusual to have a sailor coming from the prairies, but uh, living at the lake, well, when I was a young kid, we, my parents had a cottage out here at Lake Wobbleman. So my older brother sailed, so I got into sailing and um, liked it and did well at it. And, and uh, just at some point, I guess, uh, decided that I wanted to continue. Actually, I think the point was in, in 1963, my older brothers went to the Olympic trials in sailing in Kingston, Ontario. And they were just these unknown guys from the West that nobody gave any respect to. Um, and they actually did really well. They finished third. And so being, uh, you know, 10 or 15 years younger than my older brothers, I thought, hey, that's what I want to do. I want to be just like them. The waves were so big that um, if you weren't on top of the wave at the same time as the mark, you couldn't see it. And I was winning the race, but I couldn't find the mark. You, you know, you're looking and looking, and I just happened to be on the wrong part of the wave. So uh, I, I lost the lead. I ended up rounding that mark in second because the guy behind me saw it before I did, and he was able to get a better angle to it. So I was in second. I was quite confident I was going to be able to pass him back into first place, but uh, we started the what would have been the, the second beat, meaning when we start to go back upwind. And um, there was a boat in the, turned over in the water, and it's a boat called a 470, which is a two-person boat. And only one of the crew members was on the boat. It was upside down with the centerboard sticking up in the air, and he was just holding on for dear life. Um, but I, I was thinking, well, where's the other guy? And uh, I sailed for a minute or two, and then I realized, I, I saw his head bobbing in the water. and. Uh, realized that there's no way he could swim back to his boat. The boat's drifting faster than he could swim and he was going to be lost at sea. I mean, if I can't see an eight-foot orange marker, we're not going to see a little dark head bobbing in the water. So I had to make the decision, do I keep going or go get him? So I decided to go get him. You compete and you want to get accolades for your uh, results and whatnot. And in this case, I was inundated with press, uh, wanting to know the story and what's going on. And I have to race. And I was just thinking how ironic it was. You spend your whole life training and working and you know, winning championships and doing things and nobody cares. And for something that I believe anyone would have done under the same circumstances, you get all this attention. It's fantastic, actually. And I, when I went to the uh, induction, I was so impressed with uh, the facility in Red Deer and the organization and uh, just how well the whole event was organized. And I got to meet some just incredible people there. I was really impressed with the whole affair. So uh, it was a great honor to be inducted, but I was really uh, tickled with the people I met when I was there and the stories that came out.